Hello, and welcome to the Great All Shucks Baking Show, or at least an abridged version of it. Uh, this ran last weekend for the special Spring All Shucks, uh, and I'd hoped to upload a version of this as a video on demand, but we unfortunately had a few technical difficulties. So for the sake of levity, I'm giving you all the abridged version. This should at least give you a rough overview of the process, and if you like this format, then please let me know, and I'd uh, like to continue these in the future. This is just my second live stream. Both have been for conventions, teaming up with uh, some local industry people, and they've both been a lot of fun. But I'd like to explore the format a bit more in the future, potentially even having some other people on to do a true uh, bake-off. So for this stream, we're baking a classic British Battenberg cake and pairing it with the new game Cubitos from AEG. I'll have any excuse to roll dice, and Cubitos has plenty of them. Now, I've not actually made a Battenberg before, but they're a classic challenge on all of the baking shows, so I thought it'd make a good uh, initiation right for one of my first dreams. Now, we're using the Battenberg recipe from the official Great British Bake Off website, and I'll uh, list the link below. And I'm joined here by my sous chef, Ted, who thankfully remembers to show the right side. Now, while you can buy proper Battenberg tins with uh, proper dividers. I wasn't able to find any locally here, so we had to MacGyver up our own, just folding up strips of uh, aluminium foil and baking paper. Now, if you're making the traditional Battenberg with two by two squares, you only need the one divider down the middle there, but we're not going very traditional with the, this version here. Now, the first step is, of course, preheating the oven and greasing our baking pan. But once we've uh, remembered to do that, we're going to be creaming up some unsalted butter. And uh, what we had there was my new line of board game feast spreads. We have almond butter and pineapple jam. Uh, you, won't, you can't actually buy those, but you can buy the stickers on the jar there. Now we're then adding our sugar to the creamed butter. We're then lightly whisking two eggs with a couple of drops of almond extract and then adding that to the butter mix. Next we're adding some self-raising flour, which I haven't actually seen for sale here in North America, but you can easily make your own by mixing one cup of all-purpose flour with half a teaspoon of salt and one and a half teaspoons of baking powder. And then we can slowly combine that with the rest of the mixture. You can also add some ground almonds along with the flour. Uh, as you can see here, I forgot until afterwards. Then all you need is a couple of teaspoons of milk just to thin out the batter a little bit. Now we can separate the cake batter to make all of the colours. Now if you're making a traditional Battenberg you only need two colours. That is the plain cake yellow and pink. But we of course want one colour for each of the nine dice in Cubitos, so we're splitting this into batches of three. Now it's not going to look like very much cake batter, it's going to barely cover the bottom of the pan, uh, but it is a sponge cake and it will rise quite a lot. You just want to make sure you spread it out fairly evenly so that it rises consistently. And here we have a rare cameo from Mort. He's nothing as much of a show-off as Ted, though. You may hear him purring as I record this right now, because he uh, is quite insistent on being on my lap. Now, the batter's quite thick, so you don't need to worry about it seeping underneath the barriers. We're going to be trimming them down to size anyway.
So we're then baking it at 180 degrees Celsius for about 20 minutes. While we were waiting for that to bake, I gave a bit of a rundown of how the game Cubitos works. I won't do a full retread here, I'll leave the uh, how to play to the pros. But it's essentially a racing game, each player has a little cube animal that they're moving around the track. You're going to be rolling a handful of dice to both move and to earn currency to buy even more powerful dice. There is something of a deck building element here, both in how you build your engine with the dice, but also the way they cycle through to your discard. You can choose your dice in any order, but you have to cycle through your whole collection before you can reset them and start choosing again. And there's also an element of push your luck. You could re-roll any blank dice as many times as you like, but if you roll all blanks, then you bust and basically skip the rest of your turn with a small consolation. And that's always a big threat when most of these dice have four or five blank sides. But part of the engine building is learning to account for that. There's a huge amount of variety in this game too, with eight different dice to buy, and you pick one of seven different cards for each of those dice at the beginning of each game, uh, and there's four different racetracks in the box. So as you can see, the cake came out quite nicely, and we're just going to let that cool for a bit while we prepare the other colours that I made earlier. We're going to cut each of those pieces down to be roughly cube shaped on the profile side. Now it's going to look like quite a lot of waste with all the other pieces that you're cutting off, but uh, I'm sure you can find plenty of uses for that, either a nice trifle or as I did, uh, broke them up for some nice cake pops. So now we have the messy finale of putting it all together. Uh, we have here a log of marzipan that I made the night before and chilled in the fridge. Uh, and that's just ground almond, some icing sugar and an egg white. And we're rolling that out with some more icing sugar to make sure it doesn't stick to the board. Now, as we start laying down the logs of cake, we're applying a generous coating of the pineapple jam on all sides to help bind it together.
And once we have it stacked nice and evenly, we can start carefully rolling it and then uh, smoothing down the sides. It will look pretty messy on the outside, as you can see here, but uh, you can easily trim it down to get a nice uh, cross-section in the middle. Thanks so much for watching. I'm hoping to have more of these in the future. At the very least, I'll have my Calico baking stream uploaded very shortly. In the meantime, you can see some of my other creations on Twitter and Instagram. And don't forget to feed the meeple.